Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. Let's go ahead and get right into the video guys. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe and hit the post notification down below. Let's go ahead and get into it guys. I am getting pretty excited for this week for a few reasons. Uh, one of them is that we do have the, you know, not XRP related, I know, <clears throat> but we do have the Ethereum merge coming up in two days, 16 hours, 51 minutes. Um, I kind of expect that <clears throat> Ethereum will kind of have some small little rally, potentially breaking 2,000 a coin maybe, uh, leading up to the merge. I, like, really never believe in cryptocurrency that there's going to be a oh my god, a big date's gonna come, and then we're gonna pump after that date, I don't ever really believe that, that's kind of more, you know, leading up to that date, yeah, there's gonna be a pump, that's why I had my, honestly, my personal, like, legendary kind of songbird trade, after I capitulated my whole songbird bag at, you know, 30 cents a coin or whatever, and then I saw it at 41 cents, and then the airdrop was, like, a week later, and I'm like, dude, this thing, like, literally, like has to pump and and I literally yoloed in 5k into songbird super risky and then I just knew that week it was gonna pump at least a little bit it runs up to 49 cents I just pulled the money take the 6k made a little quick 1k profit so ethereum like you know considering the merge is coming up in two days 16 hours um it, it'll probably do a little something have a little merge hype but definitely after the merge I don't think it's gonna be like oh my god now the merge has happened it's gonna pump it's gonna be the buy the rumor sell the news kind of thing um, the only thing I do believe that will cause a, hey, pump after this date is the Bitcoin halving every four years. That is actually a major historical event, and all the bull cycles pretty much stem off of the Bitcoin halving, so that's the only thing I would agree with. So guys, I cannot lie to you, I am getting excited for the start of this week. XRP on the weekly chart, I gotta say, it's looking beautiful, man. It's looking beautiful. I'm liking it. Keep in mind, this is weekly candles. This is like, you know, look, like right now, just the part I'm focusing on, I mean, you're looking at, you know, damn near half a year right there. Okay. So I'm not going to lie to you. I am getting excited. We're just focusing on this one little half a year part of XRP. As we talked about in many videos before, you got the whole Terra Luna situation, which really gave a big slap in the face to the market. Okay, but the beautiful thing is, is that all of this right here is just big gap. And within this box, um, there is billions and billions of dollars of leveraged trader liquidity just sitting in here. It's just sitting there waiting for someone to grab it. And it's just, it's looking like it's going to start getting juicy here soon, guys. It's going to start getting kind of fizzy. Okay, XRP clearly is sending a message that we're, we're not going below 30 cents. Clearly sending a message of we're not going to be going below 30 cents, okay? Then, on the weekly chart, a very, very important, big, like, high-range time frame here, okay? We got, uh, I'm trying to think what the best tool for this is to use, but look, I mean, you got the one clear bottom, the rally, the rejection by the sellers, then you come back down again, you got another clear bottom here. So you're basically just going to be going for the textbook perfect double bottom. And what I'm loving to see is that the market over the last few weeks has clearly respected that level with all candle closes. I remember when Bitcoin was sliding under like 19K a coin and it, you know, took the market down with it, brought XRP down to 31 cents and the market just went absolutely nope. And it rocketed through that, printed a big green one. And guys, this is what I think is going to happen over the next few weeks here. Um, first, we're going to get this initial break and we're going to get to like the mid 40 cent range. We're going to get that inevitable pullback. Everyone's going to freak out and think the pump is over. And then we're going to go for the gap fill. So honestly, guys, do expect dollar per XRP, I would say, in this month or next month. Because what I'm drawing out for you right now, like I'm not saying on the vertical time axis that this is like exactly what I'm saying. Like I'm not saying it's going to happen in, you know, September 26, 2022. But I'm just saying like it, it's going to be a little bit of something like this. 
market always just moves in waves man it moves in waves it goes up and down and up and down and we're on the next part of the wave where we need to come in and fill this gap guys check this one out i got a good one for you i gotta make sure my desktop audio is working okay it is new ripple cross-border payments ad explaining the direct the direct leverage of xrp part one um, we recently went over one of these advertisements and it was just pretty much the attitude and nuance from the Ripple advertisement was they were literally calling their CBDC projects with banks. They were literally calling it like as it was an XRPL function. So we know that from that advertisement, like all of the Ripple XRP or all of the Ripple, you know, CBDC projects right now, it's all based on being issued on the XRPL. That is crazy to me. I know you guys remember that video from last week. You've been tuning to the channel daily. They they literally were just talking about CBDCs. They were showing a graph of like the whole world and stuff like that and showing how it's all being connected. And then they're putting up a freaking video of the XRPL, you know, ledger closing transactions while talking about CBDCs at the same time, guys. It was crazy, but we got another video. And then the thing is, I haven't even watched this yet, so I'm going to give you guys my true reaction after this one is finished. Let's give it a watch. The market for global payments is immense. Estimated at over $130 trillion and growing. But its infrastructure is archaic. The challenge? Trapped capital intermediaries with high fees, slow settlements, incomplete transaction data, frustrating failure rates, and single point security exposures. At Ripple, we understand these challenges and have created an innovative payment solution that leverages the XRP ledger and the digital asset XRP. Yeah, XRP. You know, 2017, 2018, it was more of the tune of, uh, you know, yeah, we do have XRP in the XRP ledger, but, you know, hey, use our little Ripple uh, X current product, which doesn't use XRP and it just does messaging. It kind, guys, let me know in the comments if I'm crazy. Doesn't it seem like Ripple has thrown the whole X current idea out the window? I remember back in 2017, 18, 19, uh, whenever some news would come out, like a new partnership or a new bank, um, everyone, if if it did not specify like what they were doing specifically with Ripple, everyone was screaming, oh no, this is just X current, man. Oh, it's not X rapid, which uses the XRP. This is just X current, it's the messaging system. Guys, when's the last time you heard anybody from Ripple or in the XRP community, mention X current, dude. It seems like that thing is dead and completely thrown out of the window at this point. I don't think Ripple, like, you know, I understand from 2018, 17, 19, there was kind of a crypto hesitancy from financial institutions, but I believe the market has kind of essentially in a way matured from that. See, the way, the way Ripple was going about it was, hey, like, you know, yeah, we, we offer a crypto payment solution, but you don't have to do that. We have a non-crypto, just ex-current, you know, messaging function. You can use that to kind of, you know, get the institutions to dip their toe in the water and not be so like, oh, what the heck? I'm using one of those scammy cryptocurrencies to do payments. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to ruin my client's money. I don't want to lose my client's money or something. But now it seems like they've thrown that idea out the window considering the digital asset space is getting much, much more mature. All right. Let's keep watching. We're only halfway done with it. XRP is the perfect crypto for payments because it transacts quickly at very low cost with high throughput and is carbon neutral. Ripple's payment solution uses XRP to bridge fiat currencies, eliminate pre-funding, and makes payment terms visible which supports our partners' compliance efforts. And we offer affordable line of credit options that enable capital agility and rapid scaling. When you are ready to scale to new corridors, 
our network provides you access to premier receivers in key markets that you can start transacting with in as little as four weeks. Damn, are you telling me to set up corridors through ODL on the XRP ledger? It's taken them only four weeks? Damn, that is crazy quick, I think. I mean, you're getting a whole financial institution connected to a decentralized level playing field, line of credit, leveraging XRP on the XRP ledger. It only takes them four weeks, man. That's that's kind of crazy. Because to me, it seems like these banks have been like, you know, takes them like a, like a year or something just because of all the, you know, legal and regulatory hoops and they got all the legal advising they have to seek out and stuff like that. Crypto Insight UK, nice video. You're going to get that a follow there. Uh, and then did you notice kind of the subtle... Uh, when they were showing the group of fiat currencies, they were showing, um, I, I know my fiat currencies really well, right? So we got pound, yen, euro, dollar, pretty sure that's either Philippine peso or Mexican peso, one of the two. And then do you notice the subtle addition of this? Now, that could be the Thailand currency, um, or that could be Bitcoin, because I'm thinking that was kind of a Bitcoin reference because of the Ripple liquidity hub. And how they would be providing liquidity, like, you know, with Bitcoin and Ethereum and stuff like that. But let me just look up on my phone here. Yeah, Thailand bat currency logo. I'm pretty sure that's the Thailand bat. Yeah, okay, guys, that's my mistake. I, You know, when I was watching the video, I was like, whoa, 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 look at that. They're putting the Bitcoin logo, a little Ripple liquidity hub. But no, I'm mistaken. That is the uh, Thailand currency. But it looks awfully close to the Bitcoin one. That is my mistake. All right. Last one for today, guys. This one is pretty major. Uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, when I record these videos, I don't make the title and thumbnail beforehand. I make the title and thumbnail like after I create the video while it's rendering and processing and stuff like that. That's just the way I like to do it. I know a lot of, I hear a lot of like, you know, YouTube channel gurus that are out there. And they literally like, it's funny. There's these YouTube channels with like 300,000, 500,000 subscribers. And, like, the only thing they make videos on is, like, how to be a good YouTuber. And one of them is, like, no, don't make your video first. Make your title and your thumbnail first, then the video. I don't know why, but that mentally screws with my head. I, like, have to make the video first. And then, you know, because I'm the one talking in the video, my brain, like, collects everything I talk about in the video. And I'm, like, okay, I use that information to make a good title, good thumbnail. Anyways, so the chamber is wading into the Ripple versus SEC case. I believe in support of Ripple, okay? Expect something similar to what it filed in the Telegram case, because they also interjected in the Telegram case, and the argument is that although the sale of XRP might have been as a security, the token is inherent is not inherently a security, similar to John Deaton, just not as compelling. So guys, here is kind of the reality of the Ripple versus SEC case. We're going to have to give the SEC a little win. Like, we're, they're going to have to take... Th this is my thing. I don't think for Ripple, it's going to be like a 100% hey, Ripple won and they are the winners. They defeated the SEC. I think that will be part of it. I think it's going to be like, you know, 60-70% hey, Ripple freaking won this settlement. They came out on top. But I think the SEC is going to try to get ripple on some sort of technicality okay it's the whole like bs argument where they could be like oh you know well back then in 2013 when you know literally no government anywhere was providing any sort of regulatory clarity so you know these legal companies had to work in these shadow gray areas not knowing like i mean they're acting out of good faith but not knowing if they're breaking any minor little legal misdemeanor right so back when you know like, nobody gave a rat's ass about cryptocurrency. No one was providing any regulation or platform for crypto. And that's what I think the SEC is going to get Ripple on. I think for the most part, Ripple is going to come away from this case winning. XRP first legally classified cryptocurrency for the United States. Like John Deaton has said before. But it's like, I, I think that SEC, you know, fishboy Gary Gensler who, by the way, has like some $100 million business that's like not even properly registered or something that we found out. You know, Fishboy Gensler, it's a political power grab. If this case ends in the favor of Ripple, 
the SEC is going to have to have a little, just their one little piece of bread that they can show and go, yes, you know, this is what we got. We, we did a good job, right? I mean, they got to have something to show for this case. This is a groundbreaking case all over the media. I'm talking not just like, you know, oh, Coindesk, Cointelegraph, or XRP Daily Media. No, I'm talking like CNN, CNBC, Forbes, freaking Zero Hedge. Like, this is all over the media. The SEC is going to have to walk away with something. And that's what I think they're going to get them on. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, this one time, uh, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, uh, you, you maybe that, that, that sale right there, that was a security, but it's not a security anymore. That's what I think they're going to go ahead and get them on. Check this out right here. You go to the main tweet. XRP Crypto Wolf says, anyone else see Brad Garlinghouse right above exhibit? Purian, I don't know, that's a French name, Purian. And Digital Chamber finally came through for the XP Community Ripple. Two years too late, but that's okay. The Moonland would chime in saying, I can definitely read Brad Garlinghouse there. Um, okay, so I'm like, right now, really, really close to my screen. What I want you to do is, however you're watching this video, just like, move your head about two feet back, and you can definitely clearly see Brad Garlinghouse. Like, if you, if you look at this really close, you're not going to see it. You back up about two, three, maybe four feet even, you're going to see the faint, faint Bradley Garlinghouse. So, guys, we know for sure um, Chamber of Digital Commerce is chiming into the case. And thank you guys for the video today. I'll see you guys in the next one. And look at that. Hidman trending on Twitter. wonder what that's about. Peace.